Hi guys, we are here for religion. Um, and last week in our religion, we were talking about prayers of petition, which is an asking prayer. So to start our religion today, I'm going to um, say a petition prayer. So say it along with me. We always start our prayers with the sign of the cross. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Dear God, please fill our family with your love. Please help us to always show our love to others. Amen. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Now, I want to tell you something. Miss Egan made that easy peasy petition prayer up, right? Something that I always want is God's love with me and my family and with you and your family, right? And I'm with my prayer petition, I'm just asking for that, right? I'm saying, knock, 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 God. Please always make sure you can send me your love and send it to the boys and the wolf pack and their families, which I care about so much, right? So a prayer for petition is something easy. It's just if there's something that you feel a little sad about, you don't have to use um, a Hail Mary or an Our Father. You can just say a simple prayer and just have a conversation with God, right? And just ask him if you need a little help. Um, so um, this week, we're going to be talking a little bit more about the different helpers that came um, after Pentecost. Now, if you remember, Pentecost is when the Holy Spirit came down, right? It was that 50th day after um, Easter Sunday, right? And before Jesus ro uh, rose on Ascension on the Ascension Thursday, right? He said, the Holy Spirit will come. And when he comes, it is your job to his disciples to go and spread the word all over the world about the goodness and love of God. Now, on Pentecost, when the Holy Spirit came, remember it came um, as an image of um, fire shaped like a tongue. Why was that important that it was shaped like a tongue? What do you need your tongue to do? You need your tongue in order to talk. And if the disciples were going all over the world, they might need the help of the Holy Spirit with their tongue because they don't know how to speak all those languages, right? So I'm going to tell you a story today about a um, saint who traveled all over the world and did the work of what Jesus asked and he used um, what he knew and he used different languages in order to do that. So if you have your book, you can um, open up to page 270. If you don't have it, just pause Miss Egan real quick and go grab your book, okay? Now, you guys can see the uh, illustration there and that is St. Francis Xavier. And... Um, St. Francis Xavier, he went, traveled really far to Asia, right? We remember where Asia, Asia was that huge continent, right? The largest continent, Asia. And he traveled all over Asia. He went to, um, he went to Asia. He was in Japan. He was in India, which are all different parts, right? And this was a long time ago. It wasn't like he could hop on a plane, right? Or um, hop on a jet, right? He traveled really far and it took him a really long time to do this. But he was doing the work of God and the, the work of Jesus and going around the world and spreading the good news, right? The gospel of Jesus. So let's read about St. Francis Xavier. Francis was a follower of Jesus. He wanted to tell people about the good news. His friend, Ignatius of Loyola started a group made up of men called the Society of Jesus. Ignatius invited Francis to join. The Society of Jesus became known as Jesuits. Now look at this, um, the way that they spelled Jesuits. That's the beginning part of it. What, is that, what does that word look like so far? If I add an S, it will say... Jesus, right? But Jesuits. So they became known as Jesuits. What do you think that meant? That they were followers of who? That they were specifically, they really strongly so believed in the word of um, Jesus, right? And they wanted to do everything as best as they could by him. So Francis joined the society. And when he did, he was sent to Asia. He lived and worked with poor and sick people in India and Japan. Francis spoke to the people in their own languages. He started a school for boys. Francis baptized many people. He brought to them the peace of Jesus Christ. 
What do you think Francis told people in India and Japan about Jesus? What do you think? And why do you think it was so important that he talked to them about Jesus in their own language? Well, they might not have understood him if he wasn't speaking in their language, but it also showed that he took the time and really wanted to talk to them the way that they wanted to be talked to, right? To treat one another, right? To the golden rule, treat others the way you want to be treated. And if someone's taking the time and putting in the effort to speak the language that you speak, then it shows that they care, right? They're they're showing kindness, right? It's not just being nice. It's that kindness, that, that true generosity that they really care and they want to get to know and they want to help, right? So he really wanted the people to know how much God and Jesus loved them, right? I think maybe they told he told them all about how Jesus died on the cross and how uh, wonderful he is and the miracles that he was able to make and that more than anything else, Jesus wanted us to love one another. Now, if you look on the next page, you can see a circle of people. And all of the people in that circle, they all look different, right? And that's because the church, we in the world, right? There are all different races and all different people and we speak different languages and we have different abilities, right? We're all different, but we are all children of God, right? So all over the world, people belong to the Catholic Church and they are all the human race. And it's so important that we treat others the way we want to be treated, right? And um, to show one another the golden rule, to live it all the time, right? That's why our petition prayer at the beginning was to always help us to show others love. Um, now, one way that we remember that when we're at church all the time, um, there would be a certain time in the mass. Remember, the priest would say, um, now is the time for our sign of peace. And the purpose of saying the sign of priest, the sign of peace is to let others know, right? You say, peace be with you. Right. And it's not um, it's not a greeting like we in our classroom during our morning meeting, we would always shake hands as a greeting. Right. But when you're putting your hand out and you're shaking someone else's hand and you're saying peace be with you, you're saying I want there to be peace with you and for you that you have a peaceful life. Right. That I I am your friend. I will br bring peace to you. Um, so in in that circle. Right. You see some lines to write on. So I want you to write peace be with you. And I want you to remember that we are one family in the world of God and that we God wants us to live together in peace, okay? So after you do that, if you want to add some little colors or any other mantras, things that you believe that Jesus wants us to do too, you can write that in there. There's plenty of room. All right, guys, I'm so proud of you and I love you so, so much. Bye.